much more than your tangible blessing because we understand in the kingdom of God and in the spirit that the things that, that are seen are actually made of the things that are not seen. So it is the unseen that controls the sin, okay, in this kingdom. So for every testimony, amen, glory to God. For every testimony that we are going to be seeing in your life that are going to be as a result of the intangible blessings that you have received, are we together? The intangible blessings that you have received, the intangible blessings that you have received in form of giftings, anointing, character, secrets, and principles. These are key. Okay, so when you are able to treasure your secret, you become a treasure on the earth. Are we together? Stay with me. If you treasure your secret, then you become a treasure. So when God wants to bless a man, the first thing God will do for that person is not to give him a car, it's not to give him houses and cars and all of that. It gives him something that is intangible. Okay? All right? So I want to share from what I consider as my blessing as we celebrate this morning. And I'm titling it, Be a Fighter. Okay? Turn your Bible to 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 7 to 8. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 7 to 8. Let's open up the scripture. Glory to God. And this scripture, okay? Second Timothy chapter 4, beginning from verse 7, and we'll read the 8th of it too. I have fought, this Apostle Paul giving his testimony, an apostle of Christ, suffered many things in the name of the Lord, and he did extremely well, great exploit that he did for the Lord. He was a man on a mission while he was on the earth. And here is his testimony. He says, I have fought the good fight, good fight, good fight. So there is a good fight. There is a good fight that is a bad fight. All right? Well, quickly, understand that if you are a visionary, you are, you are running the purpose and an assignment, you must understand that you are in a fight. Most of us doesn't want to engage in a fight, but you got to be in the fight. All right? You have in a fight. He says, I have fought that good fight. I have finished the race. Okay? Let's mind, be mindful of some words there. Good fight. Race, the race, the race, not just any race, the race, specific, definite. I have, my race is not your race, yours is not mine. An anniversary gives us the opportunity to recollect and to reflect, okay, on our race. The, I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. Look at the third one. I have kept the faith. I have kept, because these are the three things that matter as we begin to grow. Three things that matter, okay? You must understand that you are in a fight because life is a battle. No vision fulfill itself. No assignment fulfill on its own. Okay? No movement without an involvement of a force. All right? So if you do not understand that part, you will realize that you will never be able to do something tangible with your destiny, with your ministry, with your life. Okay? And God gave me this blessing quite early. And I'm still in that blessing. Okay? He says, I have fought that good fight I have finished the race and I have kept the faith because you need the faith to finish the race. I have kept the faith. So you need the faith to keep what? The race. You need the faith to keep the race. So whatever race God has set you in, all right, you need the faith. So whatever you are doing right now as God's calling or what you believe you've been crafted to do is a race. And you must run without understanding. You need the faith <laughs> to finish the race. And while you are applying the faith to finish the race, there is a fight ongoing. Oh, glory to God. And that's what we're going to discuss this morning. Okay? Look at verse 8. Look at verse 8. Oh, my God. Look at verse 8. I, I, I'm feeling so much joy within me this morning and for this real honor of sharing this word. Look at verse 8. He said, finally... There is laid off for me the crown of righteousness. Finally, after I kept the faith and I finished the race and I successfully went through the fight. He said, right now, finally, this will be your testimony in Jesus' name. Finally, there is laid off for me the crown of righteousness which the Lord righteous judge will give to me on that day and not to me only but also to all who have loved his appearing. Two things will be so beautiful at the appearing of Christ. Number one, the fact that you kept your salvation. And number two, both way equal actually. And number two, 
that you are able to complete your assignment on the earth. So anniversary gives us the opportunity to focus on our assignment. So as I share from my own life this morning, it is my prayer that you will receive it as an addition to whatever you've been doing so you can be able to finish your own assignment on the earth. So we do an anniversary to thank God. The psalmist said, he, uh, teach us to number our days that we can apply our art to wisdom. So the excellence of doing an anniversary is number one, to thank God, and number two, to give ourselves to wisdom. So there's a wisdom required to do the assignment. And Paul giving his testimony, he said, I have fought the good fight. I must understand that I'm in a fight, so I have fought the good fight. I knew this early, and I committed myself to a fight, and I fought. I have fought the good fight. And I have finished the race. Whatever race God has set you in, you will finish. And I kept the faith so I can finish. Men of vision are fighters. Men of vision are fighters. The way you handle your life if you are a visionary person is to be able to understand that you are a fighter. You must approach your life as a fighter. Not a bad one, but a good one. And when somebody is going for a fight, you have a mission at the back of your mind. You have a target to develop strategies, right? Because at the end of the day, you would not want to come back wounded and be a victim. You want to return back as a winner. That I went for the battle and I came back victorious. And in Christ Jesus anyway, we have understanding of the fact that we are more than a conqueror. We have the privilege of winning before the battle began. But concerning your assignment on the earth, you must approach it as a fighter. You must have a fighting mentality. Nothing just happened. Nothing just happened. Life will not come to you on bread of rose and comfort. You must be able to fight for what you are looking for. Fight for your increase. Fight for your breakthrough. Fight for your testimonies. Fight for your relevance. Fight for your continuity. Men of vision, a fighter, the fighting spirit is a willing spirit. I put it finally. Finally. Aragatata labago shandalaba. He said, finally, that is, in other words, I began and I ended successfully. Many begins their vision, but they cannot end it. Many get started, but they don't have a finishing anointing. But Paul said, I started and I finished. And there is a crown waiting for me right now because it is the spirit of faith that helps you to start and to finish. And a fighting spirit is a spirit of faith. A fighting spirit is a spirit of might. A fighting spirit is a spirit of courage. Because your vision requires all this input. You need strength to do exploits. They that do know their God shall be strong and they shall do what? Exploits. So there is a requirement for strength to command exploit. And the essence of that strength is to continuously be in a fight for victory. Fight for growth. Fight for advancement. Fight to live above all forms of discouragement. So the spirit of faith, of the fighting spirit, is a spirit of faith. The fighting spirit is a spirit of faith. The fighting spirit is a spirit of faith. It's a spirit of courage. A spirit of mind. So you are at a point that you cannot be discouraged. You are at a point that you cannot be discouraged. You keep doing what God has called you to do. If you fail in the days of adversity, 24 of Proverbs, and verse 10, how little is your strength? If you fail in the days of adversity, how little is your strength? Because your vision will attract challenges. Your dreams will attract difficulties. And it is in the middle of difficulties that your strength is unveiled. Everybody can be lying and they have strength. Everybody can be packaged. You know, we live in a world of packaging. But when reality does come, we will know truly if there is content in your packaging or you are faking it. So the Bible says, now listen carefully, you've got to be a fighter if you are going to succeed with what God has called you to do. And to be a fighter, there is an amount of strength required. 
And the Bible that if you fail in the days of adversity, how little is your strength? You need to be tougher than life's situations and challenges. You need to be tougher than life's situation and challenge because strength is a major tool for the assignment. And strength helps you to be tougher. For example, we are still doing online Thanksgiving. In the middle of the pandemic, it's a kind of a spirit, sir. It's a kind of a spirit. With total compliance with what the government is saying, an expert, but ability not to throw off and drop the ball. It's called a fighting spirit. And there is a strength required for that many people that have abandoned what God has called them to do. May this moment be a blessing to you. The vision, the dreams, the aspiration God laid in your heart. You know why? Because adversity comes. Challenges arrive. Situations that are unprepared for at any to them and they just dropped off. Just like coronavirus, COVID-19, this global pandemic came to our world unprepared for. No nation can boast that they were adequately prepared for this satanic interruption called COVID-19. Life will always be like that, whether you like it or not. And if you're going to pursue your vision with all the doings and all your gettings, you must understand, ladies and gentlemen, that things are still going to happen to you that you never prepared for. It is in the middle of those situations that your strength is discovered. For example, we know you now. Some people now, since this thing started, they have never given an offering in church. They have never given their tithe. They, have never, they don't pray. They don't study. They are not on fire for the Lord. It simply just unveiled you. And that's what vision does. Vision means strength because if you do not have enough strength, you are going to faint again. And it will come. The things you saw in your dream will not just happen overnight. It's going to happen over time. And in between, there will be a lot of things going on. But, but, but my blessing is this God blessed me by the Spirit. And I want to have the same spirit this morning to go with a vision. And I've not seen one vision here. One great man that becomes successful without this testimony of a fighter. Victory helps us to enjoy that sweetness of pain. The sweetness of thanksgiving. They both go together. You know, inside your pain, it's your gain. Inside your defeat, it's your victory. But we can never enjoy the sweetness of thanksgiving and the sweetness of victory if you have never understood what it means to go through. Oh, yes. You don't enjoy the beauty of thirst until you are really thirsty. You don't even enjoy the food until you are really hungry. So thank God for the free food that we have enjoyed and we are enjoying and we shall enjoy. It helps us to enjoy the sweetness of thanksgiving. Now, why are we thanking God? Because we are had to go through a lot. And the fighting spirit has kept us on the go. The fighting spirit has kept us where? On the go. I have had a lot of things to deal with. From hunger to lack. From inadequacy to limitations. Now, these are things I've had to do with. But what has kept me it at all and is still keeping me is the testimony of a fighter. No retreat, no surrender. It's too late to go because the bridge has been bumped. It's a fight from victory, and the victory must be annexed and realized. Must be annexed and what? Realized. So, we are able to enjoy the sweetness of thanksgiving because we have had to go through a lot. So, when we say a man has fig tree, it simply means he has pain to demonstrate. He has scars to show. He has wounds to avail to you. We cannot enjoy the real glory if we are not told the real story. So, behind every glory, there is a story. Behind every gain, there is a Pain. It takes story to help us to appreciate the glory. But how do you come into the glory if you are out and you are out and practically out of a fighting spirit? You can't drop that business now. God gave it to you. You can't drop that dream. God gave it to you. You can't drop the picture God painted in your spirit. You can't drop it because God gave it to you. You need a fighting spirit to get there. You also need a fighting spirit to sustain it. Look up here. You also need a fighting spirit. 
to multiply it. So what do I do? As a fighter, this at least I feel must be in your own life. But I got my own life as my own testimony. Number one, you must depend on God. Ah, a fighter that will achieve his dream must be somebody that totally depends on God. This is what I will consider seven out of many things God has taught me to help me continue with the pursuit of my vision as a fighter. Depend on God. Ah, Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 to 6. You must, all, I beg you, you know, hear me carefully. Ah, to take your eyes off God is to be grounded in the pursuit of your vision. Proverbs 3, verses 5 to 6 says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. I love to read God's word one by one. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. This is my testimony. And I'm asking for more grace on this reality. That trust in the Lord with all your heart. There is nothing to package that the Bible says all. In other words, when you come to trust, there must be no space for any other person. All your heart, the entirety, the totality of your heart is occupied with God. Towards the achievement of your dream. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. Come on, that is a conflict. This is a statement of conflict. To the intellectuals, to the scientists, this is a statement of conflict to those who are puffed off with their knowledge. This is a statement of conflict to those who pride themselves on the things that they have acquired, on their degrees and their certificates and their papers. But God says to be a fighter that we finish the race, that we keep the faith, you must depend on God. Depend on totally. How shall this thing be Mary said? How shall this thing be? This I have no idea, no sexual intercourse. I have no network. I have no strategic alliances. I have no one to help me. How shall this thing be? I'm getting your attention. I'm glad about it. If you will fulfill that mission, you must circumcise your heart to trust God. Trust him completely, sir. I am on this holy altar. I can be nice to people and I'm, I think I am nice in a little way. Not to overblown myself. But I have none in my heart competing with God. I have nobody in my heart competing with God. I trust God absolutely. Absolute trust in God is the winning ticket in the pursuit of your vision. In the fight to end well. You must trust God, sir. Look at me. I know you are in your room. But please, I beg you, trust God. If we went Things are not working well. Stay trust God. Don't, I will show you a scripture that will bless you. Now, see, what I did is this. I brought out scriptures, my scriptures. It's an anniversary service. So I brought out my scriptures and my secret. Each of the scriptures I'm sharing right now, they are my scriptures. Give me for six, please. They are my own scriptures. And I'm sharing my scriptures with you. All of my heart. That is why you see Pastor Paul. Focused. Totally on God. Look at this now. In all your ways, acknowledge him. And he shall direct your path. In all your ways, acknowledge him. And he shall what? Direct your path. Total trust, absolute trust in God. And listen carefully, the proof of that is this. He shows in your undertakings. He shows in your ways. And there is nothing you are doing outside God's endorsement. You acknowledge him, and God begins to direct your path. Everything you are doing, you must say, Pastor Porto has joined them. He's distributing stuff because of the global pandemic. You are wrong. Ah, I wish I can accept your sweet, laudable compliment. But you are wrong. For those who are close to me and who followed us online, will have seen that since last year, the Lord said to me, there was a prompting in my spirit to feed a thousand family, we call it shop and chop, shop and chop and chop. We use a pidgin language, pidgin English language, from where I came from, chop and chop. I was together now. now. Now, that was put in my spirit since last year. I had no idea that there's going to be any pandemic. And the same day that we put is on the 12th of April. I came back from outside the country and I felt like I should cancel it. We had to cancel some programs and postpone some. And the Holy Ghost said, don't cancel this. 
still do it. So there was no logic. I hope you can still receive what I'm teaching now. There was no logic. It was it's not logic. And we did it. And to the glory of God, after we got it done, a lot of persons appreciated our effort. And I got a call, a benevolent call. Can I partner with you to do the second phase? The reason we are doing the one we are doing today. Now, it is not because someone is trying to be smart. He said, in all your ways, acknowledge him, and he shall direct your path. That's why some people have problems with me. And they say, Pastor Paul is a little bit smart. I have never been smart. I have heard, I've just been acknowledging God. Never. I have never been smart. What I preach, where I go to, how I do things. Now, this is Pastor Paul sharing with you. It's an anniversary Sunday. And the spirit of integrity is behind this message. I have never been smart. I have always been prompted by the spirit. He said, in all your ways, acknowledge him. He shall direct your path. A man that trusts in God absolutely will enjoy the benefit of God being his director. Will enjoy the benefit of God being his director. Listen carefully. I know your vision needs men, but allow God to raise men for you. Hey, this is very strong. You can't pursue men and lose God. You will soon be frustrated and embarrassed. But if you pursue God, he will raise men for you. So don't change the order. And Pastor Paul is not changing the order anyway. God will always raise men when it's better you allow God to raise men for you in all cadre, in all levels, and in all aspects of your life, including your staff, including your gate men. You need, you need two gate men, three gate men. Let God choose them for you. Including your wife, your husband, everything you will ever need, human resources, financial resources, all that you will ever need has to be by divine allocation. And it's going to be a result of a total trust in God. Look at, look at this scripture. This is my scripture. I told you I'm, I'm sharing my scripture this morning. Jeremiah 17 verse 5. If you are talking about Pastor Paul, these are his scriptures. And these are the points that has helped me that to now we continuously help me. Look at it now. 17 verse 5. Give me verse 5, please. Thank you, sir. God seeks the Lord. Cost. Cost is the man who trusts in man and makes flesh his strength? Who's at the back from the law? Let's go one by one. The day of Proverbs 6, I need you to trust me completely. Absolutely. Then you are blessed for doing so. Jeremiah said, if you shift focus, you are cursed. To be cursed means to be disempowered. To be cursed means to be what? Disempowered. So you are disempowered to achieve your dream. You know why? You have elevated men above God. You should lift men above men and God will raise men for you. He raises men from the donkey. He knows who you need most. Who you need most. God knows who you need. There's so much in your life. God, is, God knows who you need. Many, I will still get there. The people you are chasing, you don't even need them. Allow him that knows all to give you your own. And don't bring your life under a curse. He said, cost is the man who trusts in man. And makes what? Flesh is strength. Who's hard? If you will achieve this vision, please trust God. Depend on God totally and absolutely. Number two, if you will achieve your dreams and be a fighter to the end, let Holy Spirit be your senior partner. Your ultimate, your senior partner. Ultimate senior partner. You are a child of God, born of God, redeemed of the Lord, and God has given you a dream and a vision. Come on, open up to the Holy Ghost. There is no science Holy Ghost does not understand. Are you still here? No science. Please don't be confused here. Stop disrespecting and abusing God. He said, no, no, this one is a science. That is God. There's something like that. God is called omnipotent of many times. He can do all he knows all. There is nothing God cannot agonize. If your mind is activated scientifically and you retain God in your heart, then God by his spirit helps you in that space. 
If your mind is activated mathematically, and you retain God in your heart by His Spirit, then the Spirit of God helps you in that same space. And it starts showing things that you have no idea of. So only spirit is your major requirement in this fight of vision. Vision is a fight. And you have to fight. Look at me. Please. Some people, when they have vision, the first thing they are looking at is who will help me, who will help me stop that. <laughs> so you are so disappointed. You are abused because you are changing the order. Are you a child of God? You are changing the priority. Are you a child of God? Look at Isaiah 30, verse 21. Look at it. Isaiah 30, verse 21. You have to let the Holy Spirit be your senior partner. Holy Ghost, how are we doing it? Look at it. He said, your ears shall hear a word behind you saying, this is the way. Definitely. Non mistake. Say no mistake. Accurate, specific. Your ears shall hear what behind you say. This is what? You need to know the way to arrive to where you are going. Your destination is at the mercy of the way. And Jesus said, I am the way. Truth, life. And the Holy Ghost will open your eye, your ears, to hear a word say, This is the way. Do what? Come on, walk in it. Whenever you turn to the right and or whenever you turn to the left. Can you see now? The way you choose and how you walk in the way is entirely, I was together, is entirely at the mercy of the yearning of your life. How do I go with this business? How do I go with this vision? I tell people, including spending of money. You can't take Holy Spirit out of your financial intelligence. You can't take Holy Spirit out of financial management. Let me say this to you. It will help you and I. I was to do something sometime. Not many people called me. I had thought a lot of persons will call me for what I wanted to do. But I can count those that called. And the few that called and the most needed cause in my life. You know why? About 75% of those that called were encouraging me, strengthening my heart. The 25% of the rest, are we together? Flex me with money. You see, Nick, here. You don't need all these calls. They are the reason why you are being cut off. You are wasting your credit on useless direction. When the Holy Spirit becomes a single partner, you maintain your name. You are scarce. You can't be available everywhere to become relevant. It is the path that Holy Ghost shows for you and you walk in it and eventually you generate results that makes you relevant. And you are to fulfill your purpose anyway. So how do you do that? Depend on God. Secondly, depend on the Holy Spirit. Make Holy God your partner. Relate with Him. Work with Him. Worship Him. Have a communion with the Spirit of God every now and then. Let Him open your eyes to things. 48 of us. Yeah, verse 7. Thou shalt hear a voice behind you also. Say this the way. 48 of 17. He's a teacher. The Holy Spirit is available for us not only to speak in tongues, but to help us in the pursuit of our assignment. This has been my secret. And I'm glad everyone repeat this to me quite early. Depend on God. Make Holy Spirit a senior partner. And number three, let your vision drives you. And focus on the end. Let, you see, I will say some things this morning. Let your vision drives you. And focus on the end. Can I tell you something? Not everybody will celebrate with your vision. In fact, you will enjoy more mockery than celebration. <laughs> Many years ago, a lady that was close to me ran to me, panting. I said, what's the matter? He said, I'm just coming from a place 
where they were discussing about you. So I've been this for a while. I said, what are they saying? Then they said, you can't go far. They said, that brony, that poor, can't go far. That knee, you can't go far. He said, they were saying all manners about you. I said, relax. I went back to God to depend on him. I went back to Holy Spirit to make him my consistent partner. See no partner for that matter. Not Ashe. Your Ashe shit can't be a partner. Even your wife can't take that place. Your husband too can't take that place. But I will not go to lie to you. My vision became my soccer. I saw where I'm heading at. I saw my tomorrow. I saw the greatness of my future expression. And I was fired up. A tears and a cry couldn't stop me. One day, told that could not hold me back. I went together here. Let your vision drive you and focus on the head. Boss 